Well, welcome to another episode of the Cut for Time podcast here at the Canton United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Clay, and I'm joined by a very special guest uh, for this week's episode, uh, Reverend Nicole Anderson from Lake Ponset Camp and Living Waters Retreat Center. Um, Pastor Ooh. Nicole was with us on Sunday for Camp Sunday, um, and now we have the opportunity to just connect to discuss further uh, Nicole's uh, job and just uh, how this all happened and what she's looking forward to this summer. So, yeah, how are you today, Nicole? Awesome. I'm good. Thank you for having me on here, Clay. And thank you for having me uh, worship on Sunday. And also thanks to the whole Canton United Methodist Church congregation for inviting me into your guys' space. Yeah, it was awesome. It was so glad to have you. It was so great to have you with us. Yeah, it was super fun. Uh, you guys have a really robust kids ministry, which is super awesome to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. Really fun. It's yeah. Really fun. Yeah, they do a great job. So, mm -hmm. so uh, you were saying that there was something you loved about this year's curriculum? Yeah, so one of the things that I love the most about this year's curriculum is just that <clears throat> it has two gospel lessons and the rest of the Bible stories are coming from other parts of the Bible. And in years past, mm. we've been pretty parable heavy, pretty gospel heavy. So I love the fact that this is going to encourage folks to look beyond Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and to to explore other areas of the Bible, including, and I mean, we've typically done Old Testament, New Testament things, sure. but most of the New Testament stuff has usually been gospel heavy. Mm -hmm. But yeah. this year we have, we have stuff from Job, we have stuff from Exodus, we have letters um, and epistles to Philemon and Colossians, which yeah. is really super awesome. And then even First John, which isn't, like, that's not a gospel. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Not very often that we even look at the book of Philemon. And so like to have an entire day dedicated to Philemon is really, really exciting to nerds like me. So yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. and what's wild is like, okay, so you're gonna read, you know, chapter one, verses eight through 17. Cool. You are one sixth of the way done with the book of Philemon. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You can you read as well the just entire book of the Bible at at church camp hooray yeah, you might as well yeah I mean, what's yep. stopping you yep oh yeah that's exciting that is exciting yeah i mean it, it, and it is interesting like it has to be that has to be such one of the wildest jobs to be a camp curriculum writer because mm. how do you balance people that are just stepping into faith and people that maybe have no background whatsoever and then mm -hmm. also you have, you know, kids that and, and adults that um, have a more extensive background. And how do you meld and marry those two things together? It's a really, really interesting, uh, really, really, really interesting balance. So I also really just I just also dig um, the, the I really like the inside out curriculums that we've been using the last few years. Uh, I think yes. that they do a great job of balancing. I have a super active group and here's how I can, how, here's how I can yeah, encourage them in their, you know, super activeness. And, but also mm -hmm. maybe I have a more chill group. Here's how they can still be fully present in, in everything that we're doing. Yep. Yeah. And you know, it's super straightforward. So for folks that, you know, may have not deemed a whole lot or may not have a whole lot of time to really kind of uh, bolster what is being provided for them, you literally can just like copy and paste, take what's in the curriculum and know that it is like curated specifically through a faith-based lens of grace. I know that we get a lot of questions around, well, what, do you, what actually do you teach kids at camp? Um, you know, there are people who are concerned that we just strictly do United Methodist doctrine and polity. And, right. You know, I'm not about to explain doctrine and polity to like a third grader. <laughs> yeah. We, we, you know, we teach our kids grace. Um, mm -hmm. One of the foundations of Methodism, you know, grace upon grace upon grace is what we talk about. And so um, the fact that this has been faithfully curated by people with a deep understanding of grace and trying to make it applicable to folks, like as you said, who are just entering into it, or maybe have been steeped in faith in church for a while and need a new avenue to explore. But for our volunteers who come in, they literally can just take the curriculum, mm -hmm. they can put it into the schedule. Of however they want it, however they need to, they can tailor it throughout the week if they do discover that they have a more active group or, you know, if the weather is not as conducive to being outside, how can they adapt that to inside? 
And then for some of our other volunteers who might have a little bit more of a like a variety or a breadth to be able to add on to um, mm -hmm. and expand horizontally from what's already been given, um, it's a great stepping stone for that. I know that I've used it as a stepping stone of, oh, you know, I know most of these kids that I've had before and that I know that I can take the skeleton of this and adapt it to their specific needs. Yep. Uh, I want to dig into more of you and just how, how did this all happen, um, Nicole? So how did all of this happen? Being a camp director? Sure. Oh, good Lord. Um, <laughs> it was just so, it, you know, it's just been a wild journey of, uh, the fact that I, you know, I am ordained United Methodist clergy. I was ordained in 2019. Um, mm -hmm. and I have served two churches. One, I was Vermilion First United Methodist Church here in the Dakotas annual conference of the United Methodist Church. And then I just most recently served Hope United Methodist Church in Duluth, Minnesota, as part of the Minnesota annual conference of the United Methodist Church. Woo. We really need shorter titles. Yeah, it's very true. Yes. <laughs> yep. Um, and in the midst of, uh, serving both of those churches, um, there were just some instances that had happened that really took a toll on, on my spirit. Um, you know, when I was serving in Vermilion, a lot of that was pre general conference 2016. Mm. Um, and just some of the, the minutia of polity and doctrine and everything like that. And the, and the type of church that I was serving, and the folks that were charged to care for me spiritually and help mentor me throughout the process as a commissioned elder of the uh, United Methodist Church, yep. uh, there was a there was a lot of fracturing that had happened with that. Sure. Um, and so I ended up getting reappointed to Duluth, Minnesota, right before the pandemic happened, or like in the midst of it. Oh, uh, you know, it's a little blurry. Twenty twenty just kind of doesn't seem to really exist in my yep, brain. Right for now. sure. For sure. Um, so I moved to a new church in a new town in a new community in a new state um, in the midst of a global pandemic. And some of the things at Hope United Methodist Church, and they're very public about this. So I feel like I can speak freely about my experience there. Sure. Is that they were, they, they are um, and were a clergy killing church. Um, and so they had sent me in there. Um, under the guise of being able to help rebuild their children's ministry, do a lot of deep connections with the new preschool that they had just uh, started up with the, the mild assurance that the folks that had caused a lot of the problems with the past two pastors prior to me had all just kind of left the church due to general conference things and the changing within the polity and doctrine of the United Methodist Church, even though nothing changed. Yep. Right. Nothing changed, yeah. but their understanding that things had changed or were going to change. So they just mm -hmm. kind of left to kind of get ahead of that. Um, but also with the COVID precautions that the state of Minnesota required. Right. People were upset with that and with the fact that the church was upholding um, what the state was mandating. Mm -hmm. um, and so they so then people left because of that. And so I was told that, you know, you should be good. And like, when we're able to regather, you'll be able to like start new basically. Sure. Um, but that wasn't the case. Um, the folks that had um, chased out the last two pastors uh, came back with a vengeance. Um, and it just caused a lot of things to happen to the point where I just stepped down from pastoral ministry um, for a season. Mm -hmm. And I took a personal leave of absence from ministry just due to the conditions of which I was working in. Yeah. And they were going to, and that was in March of 2023. It is yeah. 2024. Yep. I had to do math yeah. real quick. I understand completely. Um, yeah. Right. I know time just doesn't exist anymore. Right. Um, so that happened in March of 2023. Um, and so then I just kind of didn't have a job really. I was still on payroll. They still had to fulfill their commitment since I was appointed mm -hmm. there through yep. June 30th. And they agreed just due to the nature of my departure from the church that they would uphold to that end and care for me in that way. Um, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, and so then I just kind of wasn't doing anything. I mean, I did a lot of skiing. I went to a lot of therapy, um, went rock climbing, went ice climbing, you know, things like that. Things that are, that bring me a lot of joy and were are healing to my soul. And then 
I had gotten a message from Christy Heflin, who was the previous site director here at Lake Ponset, and she had had some medical things going on with her and needed extra help this summer, mm-hmm. this last summer. And so she just reached out to me and she said, hey, like, would you be interested in coming and helping for the summer? And at the time, you know, because that would have started in May, I said, well, yeah, not really doing anything. I've not heard that I'm being reappointed. So okay. why don't we just cool. check with the cabinet? Yeah. And the cabinet was cool with it. Um, You know, the Dakota's annual conference cabinet, because of the nature of our annual conference, they know me, they've known me since like I was a wee tot. Yep. Um, And they know how much camping means to me and camping and retreat ministries. And so they were all on board for it, especially knowing how healing it would be for me from the experience that I had just had. For sure. Um, And so in the midst of all of that, Tanner Clark had been hired out as a new site director out at our sister camp at Star Mountain Center. Yeah. And he was out there and he was all by himself and he was about to host a group of about 170 people. And I, and him and I had been talking. <clears throat> and so I just reached out to him and I said, Hey, I've got an approval to work at Lake Ponset for the summer. Like, would you like me to come out a little bit earlier and I can help you prep for the summer as you're trying to hire staff and do all that stuff. And so I went out to Star Mountain at the top of May um, left there May 21st, and then I started here on summer support staff on May 21st. Yep. Um, I was, Christy joked often that I was her right hand, um, <laughs> which was fine. Um, some of the camp staff dubbed me as Boss 2.0. <laughs> you know, it was what it was. Sure. So I I came on in the understanding of, you know, like, I love camp. I love camping and retreat ministries. I'm just here to kind of figure out what I want to do as far as next steps. So Mm -hmm. it gave me the summer to just kind of be back in my home, be back in my roots. Um, Like Ponce has always had a special place in my heart. Yep. I've been coming to this camp since I was 16. I was on summer staff from 2010 to 2013. Um, And so it's always been a place of healing for me. And so it gave me the time and the space to really discern what was next. Mm-hmm. Well, in the midst of all of that, um, and towards the end of the summer season, Christy had announced that she took a position at Dakota State University and that she would be resigning from her position. <clears throat> and so then I was approached and asked, you know, like, hey, like, do you have any plans for after this? And I was like, nope, I've not been reappointed. REI doesn't want me as a backpacking guide. So I really have nothing, nothing going on. Right. Yeah. So I was invited into being the interim director. And I said, sure, I don't know what I'm doing, but I can keep the place like open and afloat. Right. Yeah. Just do the bare maintenance and figure it out. Um, And then they had opened it up to uh, folks to apply. And I actually hemmed and hawed about whether or not I wanted to apply and kind of where I was at my healing journey from parish ministry of, you know, is it too soon to go back into like a church related ministry Mm -hmm. aspect of things Mm -hmm. for me personally? Can I be as effective as I would like to be? Should I get the position? Yeah. Um, You know, and so like I did a lot of wrestling with that and went to, you know, talk to my therapist a lot about it. Um, Walked, walked the grounds quite a bit, just kind of like thinking about like, what do I want to do? And like, where is God calling me to be? So then I put in my application. Um, I don't think I waited to the last minute to do it either, which is kind of not on brand for me. Like I'm usually, my brand is I wait for like the last minute. Yep, that's fair. <clears throat> because I did, so I had applied for the Storm Mountain director position mm-hmm. um, right before Tanner got it. And I was called out for an onsite interview. And I'm pretty sure I put my inter- my application in like at 11.58 p.m. the night that it was due. I was like, oops, sorry. <laughs> Here's one more for your consideration. My bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know. Eh. And so I put in my application and then I was the interim here hosting groups, but I'd also had a backpacking trip lined up. And so I had gone and backpacked at Havasu Pai and Havasu, uh, Arizona, which is the indigenous western side of the Grand Canyon. Wow. And like, oh, yeah. And trying to get tickets for it is a, a pretty rare thing. But I was able to get some prior to the pandemic. But then they weren't able to honor it until this sure. last summer. Yep. And it was just like a little birthday trip for me. I was like, this is what I love to do. Yeah. And when I came back, 
um, we were having a site directors meeting that I was hosting. And so I was here hosting all the other site directors from our Minnesota camps and our South mm-hmm. and our Dakota camps, mm-hmm. um, South and North Dakota camps. Yep. Um, and the, the application process had closed on like that Monday. And then the next day was my birthday. And I was in the kitchen in the morning with Paul Lint and Leslie Hobson's uh, husband, and we were cooking breakfast for everybody. And we have breakfast, we serve breakfast, and Keith, you know, comes in, Keith Shu, the executive director of Camping yeah. and Retreat Ministries, with his little coffee cup. And he goes, Nicole, do you got a moment that we can talk? And I was like, oh, I <laughs> had a total of like eight hours of sleep over the last three days, um, from backpacking to being here to all that. But yeah. Yeah, we can, yeah, why don't we go, you know, out here and talk? And so we kind of chit chatted. um, And then I was offered the job. So nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really weird. Um, And because I was like so sleep deprived from trying to figure out how to be an interim director, Mm -hmm. knowing that the winter could happen at any time past like September 15th. Yep. Of, how do I winterize this space plus hosting groups and then, you know, going on this backpacking trip and trying to clean everything and get everything ready for the director's meeting. I don't think I reacted the way that he was anticipating because he, he goes, we would like to offer you the job. And I said, cool. And he goes, Oh, well, if you need, if you need a moment to think about it, I said, no, it's great. And I was like, so like even (laughs) toned. And a lot of it was just because I was so tired. Sure. Yeah. Fair. That's so fair. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. And it was just, I wasn't expecting it either. So it really caught me off guard. And so I was still like trying to process it. Mm -hmm. Um, And it really didn't sit in for like another week or two. Like, oh, like this is real. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing. I I appreciate all the background and like, you know, we've been friends for a long time. So I knew most of that story, but there were definitely some, some of the blanks I didn't necessarily know. Um, But, uh, but yeah, so now you're looking towards your first full season as being director. Um, What, what do you find yourself the most excited about? Oh, um, aside from the fact that I don't have to remove snow from our parking lot (laughs) for a while. (laughs) Um, I'm actually, I have been pining for kids to come back to camp, kids and adults to come back to camp, to hear, to hear the laughter, to hear the shouting, to hear just the hustle and bustle of camp. And so like, there have been moments, you know, in the fall, as I was saying goodbye to a lot of my hosted groups, because, you know, usually towards like between Thanksgiving and Valentine's Day, we really don't have a whole lot of groups that want to come out. A lot of it weather related. Yep. A lot of it too is holidays. People have been doing all these other things. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I I remember walking my dog. Um, I have a blue healer who looks like Bandit, mm-hmm. but his name is Ranger. Yes. Um, and I would walk him and like we would walk the grounds and I'd like walk by the playground that we have here at camp. And I'm like, I cannot wait to hear like the sounds of kids playing on the playground. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to hear adults like telling kids, no, you can't like chew on that stick or no, you can't do this. You know, just like the weird things that you don't think you should tell kids, but you have to. (laughs) Oh, you know, my kids are coming to camp. That's great. (laughs) (laughs) But like your kids and I are like besties now. Like I'm so so true. Yeah. 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 Like I'm going to become everybody's cool aunt. But, you know, so like I'm excited for that. And I'm really excited to hear like um, campfire songs and to be able to just like, I don't know, I'm going to get like a little choked up about it, but just the camp experience that yeah. you can't really describe, but like, you know, it's here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's and awesome. I also have a super killer staff. I'm so stoked. Good. That's like, so great. Yeah, we have a pretty, pretty awesome staff. We have a few new faces that are coming on board to help us out with things. Um, Like we have a brand new camp nurse. We have a brand new full-time facilities manager. Yeah. Yay. That's huge. Um, Yeah. Yeah, massive. 
Mm-hmm. And so, um, and a lot of the staff from last summer are coming back this summer too, you know, so like they know the space, I know them, they know me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I feel like we're in a really, really good position to be able to offer hopefully some of the best camp experiences for kids. Yeah, for sure. And adults. For sure. Yeah. Well, that just has to be such a, an exciting scenario would be to like, you know, go from being in the interim last year and like being Christie's you know, helper and then being mm-hmm. able to retain staff. I mean, that has to be such a vote of confidence to be like, you guys wanted to come back. So. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm, I'm nothing special. I just exist. I I love a good vibe. I try to like be who I am, Yep. you know, but when Christy had announced that she was stepping down, I mean, it was a huge blow to the staff. Yeah. Um, and they, they were sad because like they've enjoyed their time working with Christy. They've yeah, enjoyed absolutely. just like what camp is and what camp has been. And I remember one day they were all sitting down at the staff table in the dining hall um, in between groups. We had done our work for the day and they were just kind of sitting down, you know, bebop and whatever. Sure. And I walk into the dining hall and they just immediately stop talking. And when that happens, you know, like they've been talking about you. Yep. And yeah, and I go, okay, so like, what's going on? Like, yeah. what's going on, guys? Like, let's, what's happening? And they're like, what do you mean? I said, literally, I could hear you from the end of our main lodge. And now all of a sudden, like, I walk in and like, nothing. You guys are tight lipped, not talking about anything. And one of the staff said, well, we were just talking about like how sad we are that Christy is leaving. But, yeah. and then also that we hope that you get the director job because we, if you get the director's job, we're committed to coming back and working for you. Like, we're not going to leave you hanging. And I was like, Oh, and I was just like, Oh my gosh, guys. Um, and they're like, so you, so then they were just like, so you better apply. (laughs) I was like, Whoa. Okay. Kindness with a veil of threat. Got it. Right. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's the vibe. That's the vibe. vibe Apparently. Yeah. So they they right. had told me last summer that if I had gotten the position that they would do what they could to try to come back. Right. Um, if and they understood that they would still have to go through the interview process. You know, even though I, like I know them, I'm like I we would still have to go through the process. Yep. And you guys still have to apply because I can't just give you a job without an application. Yep. Um. But yeah, and so to see a lot of their names kind of pop through my inbox of them filling out the applications so was like, oh. Mm-hmm. Nice. They meant what they said. Yay, that's awesome. I know, but now I'm going to have to get a bunch more little ducks to hide around camp for them. <laughs> <laughs> What's the ducks? Oh, <laughs> so last summer, um, because I've been on summer staff before, um, when you are spending that much time with people, um, you know, just like with your family and with your friends and even like, you know, siblings and kids and all that kind of jazz, you know, tensions can run high and you can get really snippy with one another. Um, There can be drama just because you've had to forge these bonds of trust so quickly. Sure. Um, And also like, I, I'm a firm believer that, you know, being able to be angry at people shows your full trust in the relationship that you have with folks Mm -hmm. in most cases. Mm -hmm. And that happens with summer staff. Like they get mad, they get upset at each other because, they trust each other. Right. Yeah. Um, and they, they air that out. And, sure. and so one of my thoughts, because I've been on staff before, so it's like, how can I give them kind of a, a full summer? So 10 weeks of kind of like a secondary thing that is happening sure. Um, to kind of help balance the stress of working together with folks that also helps them focus their attention on something else and another common goal. And so the TikTok trend was hiding these little ducks around places. So I bought, I think like 400 tiny, tiny, tiny little ducks. And so I hid them all around camp. And on the weeks that I was gone, I would give a handful of ducks to some of our adult volunteers and have them hide it around camp because I didn't want the staff to find out that it was me. Mm. Because then that would, that would, that would occupy their time or some of their time as they tried sure. to collectively come together for a common goal of trying to figure out who in the heck is hiding all these little ducks. Yeah. 
And, and in all honesty, like from my perspective and some from what the other staff have said, they were at the end of the season, they're just like, huh, we didn't really have any big fights this summer. Mm. And I was like, I don't think, you know, I can't chalk it up to wholly hiding the ducks, but I think that that helps a little bit of, yeah. you know, they had now had a common goal to try to like yep. work together for. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's such a cool, yeah. that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Nice. So if you come to camp and you find little ducks, uh, they're probably from me, but we'll see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They could also be from someone else. That's awesome. Well, two of the staff then were inspired by that. So they bought a bunch of little frogs okay. and hid them around camp. And I've been told that there's about 200 of them in the cabins somewhere. Nice. I have found three. Okay. Nice. And you, like, because now you've been on the, doing the work of, of uh, dewinterizing and opening up lower camp. I mean, you've been everywhere now, haven't you? Yeah. So I have no idea. So unless they've told me like the wrong number, which is highly possible for these two staff members. Sure. Um, but yeah, I've only been able to find three of the frogs. Huh. Hmm. We'll figure it out. Okay. So we finished up our camp Sunday. Um, it was awesome. We had Nicole with us in worship and then we had yes. some other ex exciting stuff happening with our goodie auction afterwards. We raised about $4,000 for camp scholarships and we are having kids signing up this week, which is awesome. I've already had a couple Perfect. conversations with some folks that are going to be uh, kind of new to camp this summer. Um, hey. Super excited about that. You guys also donated four brand new kayak paddles that I have back here. These are going to yes. be Oh my gosh, these are so cool. Um, they look so cool. And I right. know that these are going to be first choice for all the kids. Nice. Yeah. And That's then nice. also over like 60 pounds of coffee. Nice. That's so yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we're able to give back in some kind of a way because camp just means a lot to our to our congregation. I mean, a lot of our congregation yeah. um, have been going to camp forever. Like I have uh, one of my parishioners um, talks about like how he was one of the very first campers at Ponset. So oh, wow. it reminds me almost uh, quarterly that the Methodist Church used to have a liquor license because when we bought Ponset, it had a liquor license and that came yes, with we it. Did. So. Yep. You know, that is no longer a thing, you know. Uh, nope. but, uh, the state changed their regulations. They sure did. And Brookings County actually back in the day had struck a deal and said that they would not give out any liquor license to any other businesses as long as the Methodist camp was here. But also clearly that has changed. Well, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Nicole, what's uh, what's going on at Ponset between now and the start of summer camp? We have a wonderful opportunity for people to come and serve and give back to the camp. We have a huge work day ahead of us um, on May 4th. It's National Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. And also with you. Woo! <laughs> Look at us being church nerds. Yep. Uh, but, but May 4th, of living into May the 4th be with us as we prepare for camp mm -hmm. um, and just having this opportunity to come together as a community. Um, our workday starts at 10 a.m. And then folks who want to leave at 2 p.m. can, uh, but you will be given uh, lunch in between. We just need to know how many people are coming so that way we can make sure we have enough food for everyone. Sure. Um, but yes, we'll have jobs for folks of helping us clean up the lower camp kitchen, um, cleaning up branches. We have some maintenance projects for folks that want to do that. Chopping wood for campfires. Um, the state park has given us quite a few logs for us to be able to split. Oh, nice. Okay. That's awesome. Right? Yep. <laughs> hey. Yeah. But yeah. So if folks want to come on out, just let me know. Um, or they could probably let you know. So that way, if you wanted to have a count, but I also don't want to make more work for you in the midst. Of oh, all it's all things. good. Yeah, that's all good. Yeah, we have we've yeah. had that in our bulletin the last couple of weeks. It'll be in our newsletter Perfect. that comes out next week. So yeah, we we'll get some some folks from Canton um, involved in that. So awesome. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's really the big stuff that we have um, going on. And then we have staff training at the end of May. And then we welcome our first United Methodist camp for the summer on June 16th. Okay. Father's Day. Very cool. Yeah. Nice. I'm super stoked. Yep. And chapel will still be happening at Lake Ponset as well? Yes. Starting on that first Sunday in June. Nice. And the beautiful thing about being an elder 
an ordained elder here is that I can offer communion. Yes. Um, since this is my ministry context. And so mm -hmm. I'll be working together with some of our summer chaplains to be able to provide um, a meaningful worship experience here, as well as Sunday brunch. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's super, super exciting. Yeah, I'm super stoked. Good deal. Good deal. Well, thanks for joining me for this conversation, Nicole. It was always, I mean, it's always good to spend time with you and uh, just to hear more of your story and just, you know, the, I, the, just camping is such a passion that we both share. And so mm -hmm. I'm glad to be able to to be a part of this with you and to come and help for, for a week of volunteering at the camp and just really looking forward to everything that that holds. So, yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So thank you, Clay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bet. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Yes. Well, thanks for joining us on this week's episode of the Cut for Time podcast. Uh, be sure to join us in church on Sunday, uh, both online and in person at 10 o'clock, um, either here in the church building or on Facebook Live. And then we'll have our live stream available uh, later on YouTube after that. Uh, but just invite you to be a part of the life of the church and be a part of camp too. So, Woo! yeah. <laughs>